Hello, everyone. My name is Kimberly Pierce Cartwright, and I'm the News and Public Affairs Director here at WNCU. And North Carolina Central University has a new chancellor. And as of June 3rd, she has been on campus and on the job. She's here with us today for a few minutes to be introduced to our listeners here at WNCU. I'd like to say congratulations and welcome to North Carolina Central University, Dr. Deborah Saunders-White. Hi. Oh, Kimberly, thank you so very much for this opportunity to chat with you and your listeners out there. This has been an extraordinarily exciting time for me, and I so welcome the opportunity for us to have a conversation. It is my pleasure to welcome you here. And I want to know, have you had an opportunity to take a breath yet? I know it's been a whirlwind week for you here at NCCU. This has been an extraordinary week for me, one I will remember in my lifetime. And so I've been taking multiple breaths. I've been enjoying the opportunity and the conversations I've been able to have with members of our campus community, um, members of the Durham community. I've even ventured out and talked to members of the governor's cabinet and also um, members in the Triangle community. So it has been a bit of a whirlwind, but it's an exciting time for me. I made a commitment to the campus community on February 8th that I would come here and hit the ground running. So I'm rested and ready to go. So tell us a little bit about yourself. This is sort of like the first question in a job interview. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Let me just say, you know, you've seen all of my, you, my Vita's online, but here's what you won't read on the paper and what's important about who I am as a person, as an individual, as a thought leader in higher education. I am absolutely passionate about the empowering capabilities of higher education. I come here because I believe that our nation needs to engage all students. And I know that our institution uh, engages the vulnerable and the most vulnerable students and the underrepresented. And so we do that well. We have been doing that for a century and two. And I'm delighted to be a part of that. And when you ask me what makes me tick, it's being a part of these students' lives, being a part of their dreams, being able to walk the walk with them. So when you ask me what defines me, it's these students on this campus and what they're looking for and what we have the capacity to do. And that is to continue to create and develop great minds for this country. Tell me why they call you the technology lady. <laughs> That's a funny story. <laughs> okay. You know, in that field of technology, when I ascended to um, a position of chief information officer, I found out and discovered that there were very few women who had that title. And so I thought it was cute and funny. So when I walk into the room, I would sometimes be the only female in the room. And so I would just say, well, the technology lady is here. And so it just kind of just kind of stayed with me. But let me just tell you, that's the fun part of that title. Here's what the reality really means in terms of being able to operationalize that. I really do believe in harnessing the power of information technology, understanding what it can do. I'm not a gadget person, but I appreciate how we can use technology to foster better processes how we can improve communication, and more importantly, how we can enhance learning. You are the 11th chancellor and the first permanent woman chancellor. What are your feelings as you become a history maker here at NCCU? You know, I stand on the shoulders of so many great chancellors and people within this state who've been invested in North Carolina Central University, not the least of which are our alumni. And so I just want to continue to bring excellence every day to the job. I talked about Eagle Excellence. I know that what was good yesterday isn't acceptable today. And so I want to be able to push myself and our great university to always achieve uh, the next level, which 
We must all acknowledge it's changing all the time. I don't know if I would approach the job as a history maker. I'm just a sister soldier in the academy. I love that. Okay, and I'll segue into this question about HBCUs. There, there are critics out there that say that HBCUs aren't relevant in the 21st century. Why do we need HBCUs in 2013? Well, let me just start with the first uh, statement. Those folks are wrong. HBCUs are more relevant in the 21st century than they have ever been. I was naive enough as a young woman to think that we would never be talking in 2013 about first-generation students. But here we are. And if you take a look at who we pride ourselves in educating and developing leaders in the spirit of truth and service, our educational values, our educational product, our fine faculty, our extraordinary staff and administrators are making a difference in our global community. So HBCUs will be challenged financially. We will be challenged to continue to have our voices heard at all levels of government and within the community to underscore that we are not a passing fancy, that poverty still exists, and we are our nation's best asset if we want to eradicate and uh, poverty and if we indeed want to remain competitive as a nation. It is my job here at North Carolina Central University to ensure that this state of North Carolina, this government, our federal folks in Washington understand that our institution is the asset to continue to invest in because we are making a difference in this global society. Okay, with feet on the ground, on your calendar, what is the first big thing to do? The first big thing that we've got to do, quite frankly, is get ready for the 13-14 academic year. And in preparation for those new students and our returning students, uh, there are a couple of things that we need to get out of the way, if you will. I am anxiously awaiting the state budget. Having said that, we're starting to already plan and prepare for those challenges, which we know will exist. And so we need to incorporate whatever those changes will be in our game plan. We need to make sure that the campus is ready to engage this new class of 2017. We need to ensure that faculty are prepared for the challenges that lay before us. We need to take Eagle Excellence or E Squared and, and make that a part of the cultural fabric of our institution because we are an excellent institution. We just have to deliver it every single day. So my job right now is to work through those cultural dynamics, or as important to that, is to make sure that I'm out and about in the community. You know, my very first day here, I was invited to the city council meeting of Durham, and I was so proud to accept that invitation, to accept the mayor's key to the city. But let me tell you, I didn't stop there. I met with representatives from the Triangle, as I've said before, and members of the governor's office. I want to reach out and be a good partner. Town and gown will be important. And let me tell you, we need to ensure that they understand that we are a tremendous asset and we're going to need their financial resources moving forward. Okay. Can we talk just a little bit before we run out of time about what you did for the Obama administration and how that work prepared you for here at North Carolina Central University? Well, it was truly an honor and a privilege to work for the first African-American president of this great country. President Obama is a man with a vision, and he had some extraordinary talent within the Department of Education. I had the opportunity of serving as the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Higher Education Programs. Um, a little-known fact was that 30 days before my departure, I was asked to serve as the assistant um, secretary for assistant secretary for all of post-secondary education to include financial aid and and uh, all of Title IV funds, but it was an opportunity to see at a different level 
the funding uh, mechanisms that are in place to help us meet the challenges of serving uh, first-generation and low-income students. It was an opportunity to gain a better perspective on the financial aid challenges and programs that exist to help institutions. It was a great opportunity to gain an awareness of institutional demands. But you know, all of that having been said, I got an opportunity to really engage how our government works. And I'm looking forward to taking that knowledge base to help us as an institution continue to grow beyond the borders of North Carolina. Okay, final question. What is it that you hope to accomplish here at the end of the day? At the end of the day, I think if you reflect on my comments on Monday, it was very clear that my goal, my greatest accomplishment is when I could stand before a class and say, No dreams have been deferred. And that's what I'm most interested in making sure happens. Okay. And that's all the time that we have for this time. Thank you so very much for having me. And please have me back often. As often as you would would have us, we would welcome you to come back. Thank Thank you. you. And good luck to you. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Very much. much. And thank you, listeners. Now, let's go back to our regularly scheduled programming. We've been talking with our new chancellor, Dr. Deborah Saunders-White.